I think many people out there, if you're new to a sport, you don't realize how long I've been doing this. I've done over 20 pro shows. I've competed in multiple divisions. And just because you take two or three years off doesn't mean you can't come back. You can't stay on the same chapter of the book your entire life. The things that once were important aren't important. You need to learn how to roll with the punches because life is constantly changing. And if you're not changing as a human, if you're not progressing, you're not evolving and you're not growing. Today, we're uh, increasing the water. So I have these little post-it notes to remind myself. Two gallons of water daily, starting today. And then we're gonna up the cardio from 25 minutes to 35 minutes. Um, at this point, I won't lose muscle. Um, so I'll only keep on getting leaner. If anything, I'll actually build muscle tissue. So I'm not really worried about the intensity of the cardio. It's not like I'm doing an hour or anything crazy. So yeah, it's becoming crunch time. So one of the troubles with training at 6 a.m. when you have a baby at home, you're trying to use the blender. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to wake up your, your baby, man. You had to be really strategic though. Yeah, very strategic. I had to close his door, close my wife's door, make sure I only do it for a few minutes. Um, I never really appreciated it when I saw a bodybuilder with a family with children, uh, how difficult it is. But now I have a new appreciation for it. Since the last time you guys see me on what it takes, a lot has changed. The number one thing that changed is me as a man. I have a family, I have a child now, and uh, I'm extremely driven. Most athletes, when they take two or three years off, they always come in worse. They never come in better. And I didn't step away from the stage because the competition was too tough or because the training was too tough. I stepped away from stage because I had personal issues to take care of. These are things that, you know, people on social media, they, they, they're quick to comment. You know, oh, you, you gave up. You gave up on yourself, man. You said you would win. Oh, look at you. You, you can't beat this guy or you can't beat that guy. You know, but they, feel, they fail to remember that we have families. We have things that are going on behind the scenes. Started together back in about 2012, so 10 years now, a decade. I want to finish with the 80s. Top set will be 80. All right? I don't know. Maybe you I'm, don't know. I've never done that. Right, that's why I welcome to today. Great form. To become a champion in any sport, it's the commitment. Like, are you willing to do everything that it takes to get to that level and become a, a world champion, whether it's you know pushing your body to extreme with nutrition, supplementation, or living in the gym and making sure we're tweaking every part of our program and getting information and applying it to make sure that you're obtaining your goal, getting bigger and stronger. People look at bodybuilding as an individual sport because it's only you on stage hitting those poses, but they don't see the team behind you. My first ever coach and nutritionist was Cass Gidry. We were working together for all four of my pro victories. And since then, I wanted to expand my wings and try different coaches. And I found myself full circle with the guy that brought me there. So I'm back with Cash. And my original trainer ever was Dr. Mike Camp. Still with Mike Camp, 
Kenny Wallach is still my posing coach. So I know what works and I have a team of people that know my body and we're just gonna roll through what works instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and catch lightning in a bottle. So what is this? This is a, uh, this is the special sauce, the Chick-fil-A sauce. <laughs> Chick-fil-A original sauce. Um, this is sort of like a dermogenic ad cream. So men, we tend to carry around here and lower abdominals. Um, so I usually put this all over my midsection. When I used to compete in classic physique, I would actually put it all over my quads. And I really feel like it helped drive out some of that water weight, it made my skin tighter, and uh, helped me bring out the lines and conditioning. And what I do is I wrap it with this waist trainer. I picked this up on Amazon for like 19 bucks. The only reason we're using this waist trainer is because this stuff burns. It's extremely like harsh, and I don't want it all over my clothes. So this helps just keep it in one spot. So this is something I do every single day. Do you, do you really feel like the waist trainer and the cream make a difference? Just from your experience? Yeah, um, so I absolutely do think these things make a difference, but at this level of the sport, we're talking about a fraction of a percentage. And when you're this meticulous, when you've been training for 16 years and competing for so long, a fraction of a percent difference actually pays out huge dividends on stage. So yeah, I do believe it. Um, it's not for everybody, but when you get to this level, it's all about the minor details. When I first started out in men's physique, it was a totally different division. Um, we were smaller, and then we started getting bigger, about 180, then we were 190, then we're 200. And I feel like I took my body as far as I could into the physique division. Um, they were actually asking me to like, hey, don't get too big, hold yourself back, but my body wanted to grow. So I decided to switch to classic physique, which I was successful there. I've been top three in both divisions consecutively at the Olympia back to back. Um, and that division started growing as well. But while classic physique, they were growing in size, men's physique started growing in size also. With that being said, I think that men's physique has actually caught up with my size and that's a better fit for me. Or not, this is like the last thing I wanna do. After a hard workout, after you've been dieting, after you've been low carbs, you just wanna come home and like rest your head and recover, but you just gotta do more work. And tomorrow you're gonna do more work and the next day there's more work. Um, the time, you can never get the time back, so you can't even skip a day. So I just literally posted this on YouTube while I was doing like my 20th minute on the spin bike. It took me like a matter of seconds. And let's see. Yeah, here I am. Yeah. That's kind of cardio. And the best kind of cardio is the type that's best for you. So like a lot of people, they think like, hey Sadiq, like how do I get a name in the fitness industry? You know, like what do I do? I want to get sponsorships and just about doing this a little bit of work. That took me two minutes to do. Um, so just do the little tedious stuff when you have time. And sure, I have multiple businesses. I have a baby, I have a wife, I have a family. I have my own training, my own preparations, but I still find time to do these little two minute things which pay off greatly. That's not so bad. Oh. Yeah, you know, like these little veins come in. Like I'll know I'm ready because this whole thing is gonna be like a road map. Soon there'll be veins everywhere. But right now they're only starting to appear. Oh, not that veins dictates like how well you're gonna look, but it does do something. Woo!
Has Pratt been different with his son? Yeah, it's been great. Um, it's been a lot different in terms of just waking up earlier, going to sleep earlier, getting stuff done when he's sleeping. Um, but it's been more motivating. So for every drawback, there's like one step backwards, two steps forward. So every day matters. Every day I step in the gym, it's gotta be a 100% workout because I don't wanna take away time from him. I've always said to be the best in the world, there's no such thing as balance. I still believe that that's true, but you need to have laser focused precision with your time and energy, okay? So when I'm at home with my son, my attention is 100% my son is laser focused. And then when I get in the gym, it's just I flip that switch, man. And when I'm in the gym and I'm dicking around, I think about my son. Hey, I'm spending an hour in the gym where I could be spending it with him. I better give it everything I got. Otherwise, it's a disservice to him. It's a disservice to my wife. It's a disservice to my legacy. So yeah, I believe that it only enhanced me as a man. It made me work harder and really savor that one or two hours in the weight room on the cardio in the, you know, underneath the heavy bench press. So it's all about redirecting your focus and actually amplifying your focus to a level you've never had before. All right, so you guys see me in the gym with my camp almost every single day for every single prep, but you guys haven't seen Mike at his office. Yes, you see him in the gym with me, but you've never seen him here. Um, one of the best PTs on all of the tri-state area. What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Me too. Awesome, Come man. Come on back, let's get to work. All right, let's do this. On the back side. And if I push down, is it worse? No, it's yeah. not worse. Up to the ceiling. How about that? Mm. Not really. Cool, hold. I'm gonna tilt to your right. Any pain? No. I'm on an angle. Mm -mm. It's important that I recover. It's important that I stay injury free. The worst thing a bodybuilder could do, number one worst thing, it's not overeating, it's not overtraining. Number one worst thing is, is to let the injuries progress. And that's gonna halt your progress because you have to spend two or three months off. I wanna continue progressing all the way to my 50s. Some people say there's a fine line with getting too lean. If you like below a certain, say 7% body fat, if you go too extreme, there's always a trade-off. So the constant training when you're getting leaner, possibly more risk of injuries, tearing muscle fibers into a bad way, having a rupture of a tendon. So the stress on the body is substantial. The DC current is different from traditional sin because it mimics the way the brain sends signals out to the muscle tissue and receives it. So we, we were scanning him, we found the trigger point here and on his oblique. So we're gonna re-educate that muscle. It's a hypersensitive point, which means his brain is sensing or sending signals to create excessive tone, not allowing this muscle to contract normally. So we found the spot here, we put a pad on. Now comes the fun part. Sadiq is gonna basically just raise his arm up and down, okay? And what we're gonna do is turn it up to the point where he can't move. And he's gotta fight that barrier and actually move through the machine. So it's like a workout? Yes. Uh, Are you ready? I wasn't prepared. I didn't trick my pre-workout. I'm gonna have my coffee. So you're gonna take it to where it's a really like a 9 out of 10. I'm gonna stop. So the machine, if you come over here then, so we need to get intensity to 100, so he's at 34. So we're gonna get him to 100. Ooh, ow, 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 so he's wimping out right now. He's ow, at 50. Damn. So can you move your arm? Let go, let go, let go, let go. Raise up, raise up, raise up. And as he moves, the signals will be sent to his brain to not let the muscle come down. Put it down. Keep moving. Ow. 12 reps, yeah? <laughs> Two. Keep moving. Three. Keep moving. Actually, as you move, it should get less intense, yes? Yeah. Good. Once I stay still, it hurts a little more. Keep moving, keep moving. Six. Seven. Wow, this is eight, incredible. Nine. Did it get less? Yeah, dude. Ten, good. Five more. Four more. It hurts the most at the bottom range. Yep. The bottom most point. Oof. Three. Competing at this level, there's so many things you need to do on a daily basis. On top of that, I have multiple businesses. I have my online coaching business. I have my sponsorships, which I'm very happy with, thank God. And I also have my own company. I have a functional foods company. It's called Chef Physique. It's a protein bar company. So juggling all this and still being a good husband 
being a good father, being a good son. This is a lot to do. And I'm happy I have this responsibility. I'm happy I could juggle all these things. And people see bodybuilders like, oh, what does this guy do? He just works out all day? That's not what bodybuilding is. That's the furthest thing from bodybuilding. I mean, look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. He took a career in bodybuilding. He went into movies. He went into politics. Um, amazing example for everyone out there. And if you're watching this and you want to become a bodybuilder and you're saying you want to dedicate your whole life to this and you want to only eat, sleep, and train, you need to change the way you're looking at this sport. It's not just eat, sleep, and training. You can still be a functional human. When I was placing runner-up at the Olympia, I was working a full-time job, nine to five. I was squeezing in the workouts and the meals when I can. So you could be a multifaceted athlete. And I think that's how this sport is evolving. And that's definitely how I evolved as a man. I only have room to improve. And for anyone that's counting me out, um, <laughs> if you're counting me out, thank you. Honestly, thank you, you know, because I put that in my gas tank. Um, I put everything in my gas tank. I already have the attention. I have the sponsors. I have the fame. That's great. I ain't doing it for that stuff. That's all noise. That's bullshit. I'm doing this shit for me. And that's why I'm coming back on stage. I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I know what I'm bringing and I want to showcase my best. So it's not a money play. This is not an attention play. This is not for my sponsors. I'm doing this only for me.